For the latest numbers, though, I do want to bring in Melissa Armo, who is the founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Melissa, great to have you on. Um, those numbers coming in a lot better than expected. Your take? I'm a little surprised because they've been hovering around that 800,000 number. So anything under that is definitely better. Although the curve has been decreasing week over week since the beginning of the pandemic, we really need to get that under 600,000, under 500,000. I think one of the biggest issues is not every state has allowed all of these industries to fully open. For example, here in New York, indoor dining is only allowed to be open at 25% capacity. Well, many restaurants are just not opening because they can't cover the cost to operate at 25% capacity. And we're now getting into the colder months. So until businesses are really allowed to open up fully, I think you're gonna to continue to see claims way, way higher than we really need them to be. Uh, I want to talk also about the continuing claims number uh, that fell a bit to, to 8.37 million. What does that tell you? Well, that's a great sign. That's a good sign. But I really don't think the market's going to react positively, unfortunately, to that today. We're, we're at a point now where Congress cannot seem to agree to a stimulus deal that's been going on for weeks and weeks and weeks. And we're less than two weeks away from the election. And now there's talk that they may not even pass a stimulus deal until January 2021. So the market really wants more than anything else to see Congress pass a stimulus deal to help some of the industries that need help, which would be airlines, cruise lines, and also people that are struggling right now that can't make the rent. And don't forget, some of these moratoriums are going to come up in January 2021 where people could get evicted. And that's going to create a lot of loan defaults coming into the beginning of 2021. Congress has to help these people. And it's really it really shouldn't be a partisan issue. And I think that's what the market really wants to see more than anything else, more than the numbers going down. They want to see a temporary Band-Aid on this problem right now because we still don't have a vaccine. We still don't have the therapeutics and people are still worried about the virus. Um, on that note, though, about the stimulus money, what if there is not a package passed? There's a very real possibility that we won't get a deal until, as you mentioned, January. What does that do to the market? I think there's going to be a deal, but I don't think it's going to happen as soon as people need it, which is like yesterday. <laughs> I mean, there's people that really needed this for the last several weeks. And unfortunately, again, yeah. it's the Democrats versus the Republicans, which is really, really sad. So they're putting the American consumer in, in, in that mix of it. And if they don't pass a deal before the holiday season, it's not going to be good for, for retail sales numbers, which, again, a lot of these businesses need. So it, it all goes together in a lot. If people can't afford to pay for basic needs, well, they're not going to go out and spend in the holidays. Many of these businesses really desperately need people to go out and spend money so they can continue to operate. Again, you have the Amazons of the world, Walmart, Target. Some of these huge companies are doing great with online shopping. And during the pandemic, they've barely been affected at all. And some of them have had big rallies. But many of the small businesses even open at less number of people for whether it's hospitality, restaurants, or even the consumer brick and mortar shopping, these businesses need people to come in and shop. And if people can't pay their basic necessities, then they're not gonna go in and shop. So I think Congress is gonna pass a deal, but I think that it needs to happen pretty quickly after the election. But I think the market could sell off between now and the election period if the deal doesn't get done. We're hanging by a thread today. And you said, well, that's hard to believe, Melissa, because we almost made new highs the other week. Yeah, that's true. But the fact is we did not make new highs and we got so close. And in my opinion, we should have just gone right up over the high. And if they had been able to pass a deal, that's probably what we would have done since they didn't. Now, the market's just basing out here, waiting to see what happens. And we could possibly see a sell off. And, and, and I'm not saying 100 percent, but I'm saying we could maybe see a scary sell off sometime between now and November 3rd. Um. I, I'm just thinking about that and, and what it might look like. Uh, you know, obviously, it's not the only uncertainty here. The other uncertainty is the election. Uh, what are you expecting? Uh, do you think we'll have a result um, on election day or election night? And if we don't and there's uncertainty after that and this thing winds up going to the Supreme Court or we don't know the winner for weeks, how will that impact the market? I think it will be negatively impact the market if we don't know the winner, at least within the first 24, 48 hours. That remains to be seen. As far as the overall trend of the market, despite who wins, 
uh, whether it's President Trump or Biden, I definitely think that the market will hold the uptrend because the market tends to be bullish and hold the uptrend for most of the life of the market. We have very few times where the market breaks in a downtrend. That being said, Biden's tax plan will affect people. And I think the market will behave much more bullishly under a second term for President Trump. And so if, for example, say Trump wins and we find out the first day, second day, we might, we might see a rally similar to what we saw in 2016 that takes off like a rocket. Again, I don't know if we're going to know the answer the day of the election and I don't know if Trump's going to win. But do you, I don't know if you remember this or people don't remember this and they, not everyone's a market person. But in the after hours, the night of the election, the night before the election results, the futures were down huge. And everyone thought that Hillary Clinton was going to win. And they were down big time. The market had one of the biggest reversals I've ever seen overnight. We were down big time. And then we actually rallied and opened up big time. And if you bought those lows on 2016, the day after the election, you could still be in the market and you would still be up. So that kind of thing could happen. But I cautious people. I'd say very, very cautiously, if you want to go long, into this market the day before the election to get a move like that because nothing's for sure right now. And I really don't know who's going to end up winning or if we'll see the results the day after. Uh, Melissa, you're giving me flashbacks um, to my old job. I was working on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange um, the night of the election, actually, in the morning after, and the futures were down. I think it was like 700 points for the Dow. And at that time, 700 points meant a lot more than it does now. Um, and then you're right, a quick bounce back um, after that. So, of course, we'll see what happens. Uh, it's going to be an interesting next few weeks. Uh, Melissa Armo, the founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. So great to have you on this morning. Really appreciate it.